President's Science Advi uh, Senior Advisor, Valerie Jarrett. I've been lucky to work with Valerie as part of NASA's participation in the White House Council on Women and Girls, which she chairs. In addition to serving in that role, Valerie serves as Senior Advisor to President Barack Obama, overseeing the White House Offices of Public Engagement and Intergovernmental Affairs. In this role, she works to mobilize communities to strengthen and improve access to the middle class, boost our economy, and champion equality and opportunity for all Americans. She's been a true advocate for encouraging women and girls to pursue STEM fields, and it's my pleasure to introduce her to lead this panel discussion. Without further ado, please welcome Valerie Jarrett. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. To our rock stars up here and to your parents and mentors and teachers and advisors, everyone who has uh, been supportive of you and made today possible, we are so grateful. You all are role models for folks all around the country who are watching because you've been through this, so you're old hat, you're alum, and some of you look a little young to be alum of anything, uh, but we are so happy to have you here. Um, as you heard, one of my responsibilities is chairing the White House Council on Women and Girls. And our goal of the council, which the president created just uh, March of his first year in office, March of 2009, and I've been delighted to chair it over the entire time, is uh, it's comprised of representatives from every agency in the federal government. It's first time in history there's been a White House Council on Women and Girls. So everyone is there at the table being represented. And the mission that uh, they received from President Obama from day one is in all of our programs, in all of our policies, in all the legislation that we support, we are supposed to be looking out for the best interests of women and girls. And so one of my priorities since day one has been the challenge of trying to get more young girls and older girls and adult women to stay uh, connected to science, technology, engineering, math, computer science. And I'll give you some statistics which will explain to you why I'm so concerned about this. So for uh, computer science, AP computer science, who took AP computer science? Anyone yet? OK, of course. Of course. Uh, only 22% of the AP students in computer science are women. That's a problem. 13% are um, African American and Latina girls, so far less than that. So when they move on from there to college, um, only 37% of the STEM graduates from college are women, whereas 57% of women now graduate from college. So we're delighted that women are now graduating from college at a higher rate than men, but we're lagging clearly behind. And then if you think about beyond college um, for careers in STEM, only 28% are women. So you see we have a long way to go. So don't feel bad that you're up here by yourself as the only guy, because we're just trying to even things out a little bit, Joey. <laughs> but you are a rock star, as we'll get to in a second. So uh, we're trying to address this. One of the president's initiatives that he announced a few years ago is to increase the number of STEM teachers by 100,000. And so if we increase the number of teachers and we are able to put the spotlight beginning at the age of these four little darlings right here, um, then we're going to be able to build some momentum and balance it out because we know that many of the high growth jobs of the future are in the field of STEM. And they're also high paying jobs and so we need to even it up a little bit, particularly if we want to attract and also very importantly retain talent uh, and be globally competitive. So. I am delighted that our, this panel is a little outnumbered, and I'm glad, though, that Joey is here with us as well. And we hope in our future that our women and girls are going to catch up. So I want to jump right in, uh, and I have a few questions for each of you, and then I have one question for all of you, and then if we have time, we're going to open it up to the audience to see if they have some questions. So let's begin uh, with you, Amy. The President spoke to you about your project. Describe it to the group for us. So um, I was a participant in the 2010 White House Science Fair, so it's been quite a while for me. Um, and my project was on building a nanotube-based photosensitizer for use in cancer therapy. So in normal English, basically, I wanted to take some very small, um, basically make a drug out of very small things, nanotubes, um, and it will be light activated, and it is mostly for use in surface tumors. Um, so the challenge was basically um, how to make it safe and how to access those tumors. So I was working on that. Great. Yeah. 
So Joey, your photo, um, uh, or the photo I should say of the president, launching your marshmallow is iconic. I think it probably got more hits on social media than just about anything I've ever seen. The expression on the president's face was priceless. It really it was priceless. So that's a hard act to follow. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to now. Right now I'm going to college at ASU, Polytechnic campus. Been working on that, working on getting a job for the summer right now. <laughs> This is a pretty good place to look for a job. What kind of a job would you be interested in? Um, I worked last summer at SketchUp. It's a 3D modeling company that used to be owned by Google, um, building a 3D scanner. And hopefully, I'll be able to continue on that 3D scanner and keep it going. And future from that, from, from let's look out into the future. Any sense of where your career might want to take you? I was hoping to keep on the, uh, working on the 3D scanner, making it into a product, and working on that. In, uh, in terms of medical products, uh, such as organs, or what, no, what kind no. of? Um, the, com uh, the most profitable means for a 3D scanner right now is for being able to scan uh, models and being able to put it into a cloud and being uh, access those models then and then be able to model off those models. You got that? <laughs> Everybody got that? I got that. All right, more for you in a minute. Um, all right, let's now move to Carissa. Uh, you were here last year. Uh, and you have this incredible page turner. So tell us a bit about that. And as you were putting together, what was the most challenging aspect of it for you? The hardest part was. No, oh, thank you. There you go. I'll set. Was um, well, we had the wheel that turned the page, but the um, it would just turn the page. So it'd be turning the page over and over the because the page, page wouldn't um, be down. So so the hardest part was about making another in wheel mm -hmm. to keep the page down. That's very good. Now, because you're up here and because of your attire, I think you've got to give a little explanation for what you have on. And I'm not going to make you stand up and turn around, but do explain your, your outfit and why you selected it. Well, um, Ms. Dotson helped us choose a team name in We're the Supergirls. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Is Miss Dotson here? Miss Dotson, why don't you stand up? Let us say. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stay taking a photo for a second. You can go, wait, hold on, hold on, stand up, turn around so the audience can see your front because that's what. <laughs> <laughs> that's on the back of Carissa's outfit. So, superpowers. Your photo with your colleagues was pretty iconic as well. I know I tweeted it out because I thought you guys were just amazing. And superpowers come in handy, right? Good. So I'm glad you're here as well. All right, now Peyton and Kiana, you did your project on Earth Day, which yes. is obviously very cool in and of itself. Uh, and it was a bicycle powered water filter. So, what on earth inspired you to come up with that? What was challenging about it? Why did you select it? Talk, please. <laughs> and both um, of you, please. Yeah. Okay, well, we were inspired to start our project because a member of our team had gone to Haiti right after the earthquake that occurred there. And um, she saw that people had really terrible living conditions because the water quality was so bad. People couldn't shower, um, they couldn't get their faces wet, it was really difficult to find proper drinking water. Um, and this was because E. coli and other bacteria that contaminated the water. So we wanted to do something that would be able to not only filter out particles and things that are found in water, but kill bacteria as well. And something that would be um, able to be transported and powered in places that might not have electricity or other means of powering. So we used a bicycle and ozone generators to do so. And what's challenging? And, and also, are you guys still partners? Are you, doing, are you continuing? Are you continuing to work together, or have you split up? And what do you have to do now? Unfortunately, the team the team is spread all over the place because we're now in college. So, and where where are you each in college? I'm a third year horticulture major at the University of Florida, and I'm a second year anthropology major at the University of Miami. And have you been working on projects that were as interesting as the one you designed together? Tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so I'm currently a Ronald E. McNair Scholar at the University of Florida, and I'm working on uh, research with the department chairman of UF uh, for horticulture, Dr. Kevin Fulta. So we're looking at creating a new class of plant growth regulators because I've discovered that my passion is food insecurity and world hunger. Great. Yeah, pretty good, huh? <laughs> Um, I actually just decided on what my major would be, so um, <laughs> I have been doing mostly, I'm trying to get into primate-related research. I want to do something with gorillas or baboons probably right now. Um, I have opportunity to go to um, a primate research and conservation place in sort of central Florida, so we make trips back and forth from there and research and help them build um, different things that they need and plant trees and things like that. That's terrific. That's great. <laughs> Alana, is it Alana or Elena? Alana. Alana. So you Sorry. decided to take on um, a topic which is very near and dear to the vice president's heart, but it's also very near and dear to yours, cancer. So if you tell us a little bit about that and your experience and uh, as much as you'd like to share. Yeah. Um, so as she said, it's very near to my heart. Um, when I was 12, I had a very rare pediatric liver cancer. Um, and then when I was in high school, um, I decided I wanted to start doing research on it because since it is so rare, people didn't know very much about it. And I was very interested in it, seeing as I'd had it myself. Um, and so I did a genomic study where I analyzed patients who had fibromyalgia hepatocellular carcinoma, which is the kind of cancer, their liver samples, their tumors, and their like, adjacent healthy liver samples. Um, and I used computer science to do a genomic analysis and try and understand maybe the differences between people's cancerous liver cells and their normal ones. Um, and I ended up finding it, well, a bunch of different interesting patterns in their tumor cells and also one specific mutation that every single tumor of fibrolamellar has, um, which then implicates that as a, like the driver for this cancer, that's what causes it. Um, and so from there, you can, now that you actually know a lot more about the disease, you can create more specific diagnostics and tests for it, and yeah. That's terrific. Congratulations on that. Um, right? So let's start at the top with Amy. We'll go down the line. And um, a couple of things. For those of you who haven't said what you want to do next and where you see your future, share it with us, if you will. But also, as I said from the beginning, you really are role models. And so, and this is going to be a lightning rod because I'm getting my high five here. Um, but you all have been pretty brief. But also, because you're role models, any advice that you'd give to those who are following in your footsteps? It's a lot. <laughs> uh, so I am a senior at Harvard College now. Um, my major is applied mathematics, um, and I'm applying that to statistics. Um, and so, let's see. Okay, so what next steps? Okay, so this fall I'm planning to enroll, enroll in Harvard Law School. Um, I'm hoping to bring my science fair background and my research background um, to innovate in the legal sector. So bringing technology to legal services, whether it's in public interest law, and also working in environmental law, which both are, require a really strong knowledge of math and science. Um, so I would say just generally, I really encourage all young people to get involved in STEM, um, and especially to stick with it. And a college degree in STEM is one of the best tools that you can ever have, and so I just, I want to send out a, a general encouragement to everyone um, and just, just keep at it. You're, you're doing great. That's great. Thanks, Amy. Joey? I'm working on getting a job at SketchUp again. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's my update. Um, as to advice, I would just say keep working hard. Don't ever stop. That's good advice. Lynn? Um, so yeah, I'm actually also a sophomore at Harvard College. I'm studying computer science, and my plan is to ultimately find ways to use computer science to apply toward biological research in the future in ways that may not even exist right now. Um, advice towards, I guess, young girls. Um, I, know I have a lot of friends also studying computer science who feel like they're slightly disadvantaged because when people are young, boys are much more likely to try STEM fields, to try just teaching themselves computer science. Um, so I guess I just encourage younger girls to start, even if they don't feel like they have as much encouragement or it's not as normal where they are, come from. Um, to just try STEM fields, whether it's science, math, computer science, anything, um, because there's no reason why only boys should start at a young age. Exactly. Great. Peyton? Um, 
My two pieces of advice would be, one, um, if you are presenting here, you already have a project that can some way help the world, and implement it. Use it, keep working on it. Um, that's the first piece. The second piece of advice is always do what you love. When you find something that you really love, your face will light up when you talk about it, you'll enjoy going to school for it, you'll enjoy doing it every day, and that's what's most important. That's great advice. Great advice. So I said before, I'm currently a third year student at the University of Florida. I'll be graduating in the year, and then I'm going to be applying for graduate school to continue in plant biotechnology and finding ways to help feed our world. Uh, my piece of advice would be for students to really take advantage of programs like the Lemelson MIT program and different opportunities that allow you to get your hands-on experience in science and also take advantage of all the educators. I know that most of you in this room are educators and without my high school biology teacher, Rhonda Flynn, I would not be in this seat. So really just taking advantage of all the opportunities that you have. I want to become a doctor when I grow up, and my piece of advice is be patient with yourself and don't give up. Oh, excellent. That was excellent. You see why we said they're all superstars. So uh, please give the panel another round of applause. A round of applause for the Superstar Support Network that's here. And I want to say to all of you who are here who made their success possible, as soon as the President finishes his remarks, we'd like to invite you over to the residence where you can observe uh, your um, children, your students' um, um, experiments and their product and enjoy the afternoon with them. So uh, someone will escort you over as soon as the President's finished and we're going to get you guys going too. Thank you all again. Thank you everybody.